Okay guys, so welcome back to my channel. This is going to be the third video out of the fourth for the trial functions discussion question and this is section 2 and of course I've divided this part into many parts to shorten the overall length of the video and yeah, so here we are today with section 2 so hope you will like uh, and continue to like, share, follow my, and subscribe my TikTok and YouTube channel so yeah let's get on to it with section 2 so the next state we are going to go today is going to be Putrajaya uh, and functions came out in paper 1 for this question as you can see so it was the first question in Putrajaya and as we look to the question let's go to so they said diagram shows the relation between sets P, Q and R. So notice that there are three sets here. And whenever you have three sets, always remember that composite function thing should come to your mind already. Because composite function at least needs two arrows to map. And if you have two arrows, most likely you are going to have three sets connecting connected with the two arrows. So that's why it's composite function. So we analyze this. They gave one info here, ghx is x squared minus 4x minus 1. But it doesn't tell us much because we don't know this part and this part. So how to know this and this is, we have to find out what is the function mapping p to q and q to r. So first of all, let's think, if you want to get ghx, means the order of the function you recall again, h is going to be your first and g is going to be your second. So this arrow, P to Q, is going to be your first, and Q to R is going to be second. So first function is H, so this you can expect it to be HX. Second function is G, so you can expect this to be GX. So now the problem is, what is HX and what is GX? So P to R is something like a shortcut. You can see here. But they have an extra here, Q, to form the same root that can lead you to R from P to R. P to R is something like a displacement, which is the shortest distance, but this is a longer route to reach at the same destination. Okay, so let's go down and see. So they say set P is mapped to set Q by the function X minus 2 over 3. So this part over here, let me clear it up. Okay, so this part over here, right here, x minus 2 over 3, as they said here, p map to q by this function. So, what you can see here is, and they told this already, means p is mapped to r to this function as stated there. So, we have already analyzed this. So, most likely, they're going to ask you, how what is this function? You can anticipate already. So, that's the technique they want you to see from you. So, when you go down, they ask first question. Write the function that maps set P to set Q using function notation. So we already have the function here, X minus 2 over 3. But what they want to know is, what is the alphabet involved? And do you know what is the format to answer function notation? So I've told this many times. So you see, it's a popular question. What's the format of writing? So how does it look like? You go down here. Change color. So part A. P to Q we know is X minus 2 over 3. So the answer is only one mark on top. So this is how you write it. As we identified earlier, it's function H that is mapping P to Q. This part here. So that's what I wrote. H axis. Arrow, must put the arrow here. This is compulsory. This is compulsory to show you function notation fx is function short form so only one mark so of course your final answer is going to gain you that n one mark total here is one mark only for part a so we go down let's see what other question they said find the inverse function talking about inverse functions here that maps set q to set p so now we have the function set p to set q but now they want us to think we was q to p is what is part b so they want us to find q to p 
and we already have p to q so how we do it is we are going to let the similar way of finding inverse function h inverse x is y because earlier we saw this is p this is q this is x this is x minus 2 over 3 so this was the function h so now this is the function h inverse x so this is the picture that's going on over here so after we make this assumption we have to shift the h to the other side and make it positive and the function hx the x term as the object will be replaced with y so this comes your object now so you will get x is y minus 2 over 3 and again now you want to express y in terms of x because our goal is to find h inverse x so you will get y is 3x plus 2 and you can conclude h inverse x is 3x plus 2 so only two marks here so where are the marks again so first one when you can show that x is y minus 2 over 3 you get your k1 mark means you know the assumption here you sub the y inside to the x variable earlier on and later your final answer of course will earn you another mark over here n1 so total mark 2 so that's part b already and now as you can expect i told you they're going to ask you what is the function that maps set q to r because here we don't know here we know it's function gx, but what is the value or the equation that expresses the function? So let's find out. So again, you can always list down two functions to guide you. Okay. Um, this one. So part C. So, and this one also, if you want another method, I can show you for B. You can put let y equals x minus 2 over 3. Why I said it is because hx is x minus 2 over 3. And we know hx is image. An image is also represented as y in the graphical form. So that's why I can make this assumption on top here. So I'll also do the same process. So I will express x in terms of y. This time is x in terms of y. Now we did y in terms of x to find h inverse x. Since now we are getting back the h inverse x, we need to change the y to x instead. So it's the opposite process of just now. So it's still the same method. As long you get the same constants in front of the y and then the plus 2, you should get the right answer. So in this case where you get the marks is when you can show this assumption over here, which is making quite common sense. Because hx equals to y. And down here when you can get your final answer n1 as well. So you get still the two marks over here. So yeah, that's another way you can show for that part as well. So next one, part c. So we know that ghx is x square minus 4x minus 1. And we found out hx is x minus 2 over 3. So now we want to find gx. So again, it's the same method again. So we can put G. So H function comes first according to the order of composite function equals to this. And now we're going to make the assumption. Uh, wait. I'll proceed up here. So this is the thing here, right down here. So now we are going to make let y equals x minus 2 over 3. Something like the similar step that they showed earlier in the part B1, the alternative method I suggested. So what we are going to find here is we are going to express x in terms of y again. Because we want to substitute the x variable on the right hand side of the equation uh, to get in terms of y now. So we want the thing to come in terms of y. So what's our composite function again? We know that uh, ghx is equal to, I mean basically you can directly put gx already gy because we said 
let that whole thing equals to y. So now we substitute the whole thing with y into the earlier equation, you will get something like this. So every x term you substitute it with 3y plus 2. So this is your expansion of quadratic, so you can do it directly if you can see the first method is 2 times 2 and then you times by the 12 times by the 3 so you will get 12y then plus 4 then here expand carefully minus 12y minus 8 don't forget your minus 1 at the back so you should be getting 9y square plus 12y minus 12y cut minus 8 minus 1 minus 9 plus 4 minus 5 so then you can conclude Therefore, if you substitute your y with x, your gx will be 9x squared minus 5. So that's one way. Or, an alternative is, you can apply the concept of inverse function on this function. So why I say inverse function is, our goal is to find gx, the g is at the second uh, order of the function. So you need to do an inverse function combined with the normal h function to get your gx. Because h and h inverse will cancel out each other to come one only, which is gx basically. So that's the clue here. So gx will equal to gh. And we have our inverse function earlier we found 3x plus 2. You can see over here. It's the same thing here. This is your h inverse x and this is the h inverse x as well. So after you get this, you can substitute this 3x plus 2 as your object into the composite function over here. See, this is the composite function they gave in the question. So that's how I relate this whole thing together. You see, there are two methods that you can apply to solve this question. So you will get... 3x plus 2 square minus 4 3x plus 2 minus 1 you will finally end up with the same answer only thing this time you don't need to change your x back to y because you want gx where x is the object so this is how you will get it so gx will be 9x square minus 5 done so where are the marks? So for this method, the first mark will come when you can show this assumption. Means you understand that you need to uh, sub the hx function in the composite function of ghx with y. This is how it comes about. So you got the gy down here. So that's your k1. And then when you can substitute the correct x term in terms of y over here you will get the second mark and of course when you have your final answer which is correct you will get your n1 mark so like this question leads you to three marks and the alternative method is also giving you three marks so how you do it is when you can show this idea over here what you're thinking here you get one mark without sub any value as well. So you can see that you also get marks for your ideas, not only by the process of substitution. You can generate an idea in the form of an equation like this. It also shows that you understand the topic. That's how you get the mark. And then, if you can sub the correct h inverse function. So this mark depends on your answer in B, of course, because this is the answer of the inverse function of h inverse. So if this one, if B you got wrong, this mark you're most likely going to lose it as well. So that's your K2 and of course final mark, one mark. So this leads you to three marks. So total, this question is six marks. So quite reasonable for paper one. Right? So that's how Putrajaya came in paper one. So yeah. So Putrajaya had many sets. So that's one of the set. And another one is... Set 2 as well came on paper 1. This one is much easier, I would say. Very fast, we can do this. So we analyze it. They said, they already gave you the relationship here. Sometimes the question want to be stricter here. You have to find it out. What is the relation between 
set P to set Q the mapping. In set P is your object, set Q is your image. So that you have to understand. And of course, the other stuff like domain, code domain, and range of relation. So that's the questions that they'll ask you here. So you see down here. So first question. So it's based on the arrow diagram, of course. It says state the range of relation. So range of relation, you always look to your right hand side, which is set Q. So range of relation is not the same as code domain. Remember that. Code domain can be anything on your right hand side of the relation. Means even if the arrow does not map to let's say 8, let's say here. If there is no arrow, all this is your code domain, but this is not your range. Range is only where the arrows map to, which is 0, 1, and 16. So that's one thing you need to take note. They are not the same, this part over here. So yeah. So don't make that mistake in the exam. So first one. A1, they ask you range of relation. So your range, make sure you put in this curly bracket form compulsory for you to put. Or else you won't get the mark. So yeah, this is how you solve it. So it's all 0, 1 and 16. So your N1 mark will come from here, of course. So one mark will be this question. And if you proceed, A2, they ask you. A2, they ask you type of relation. So now we need to analyze the arrow diagram. So if you can see here, negative 1 and 1 lead you to a common point of 1. Means two objects lead you to one similar image. So this shows a many to 1. Many is the object, negative 1 and 1. And then the 1 is the image of 1. So other than that, 0 to 0 is 1 to 1. And... 2 to 16 is 1 to 1. So many to 1, you plus 1 to 1, you will get this one again. So that's how it works. So all this actually shows a function because it ends with the word 1. Always remember that. So yeah, but is this an inverse function? You cannot say it's an inverse function. Because uh, inverse function should always have only a 1 to 1 relation. Just a recap for you all. This one only inverse function, take note. Very important. So, yeah. Of course, you can prove it with the vertical line test later on. So, if you want, you can write in a sentence. Type of relation is many to one. Make sure you have the dash sign in between the many and one. That's how you write it out. Don't... Neglect that. They, if they want to be strict, they cannot give you the mark because of that as well. So yeah, this is how you get your N1. So the key one is they want to see this part over here. So this is the one mark. And next, okay, this one's a different question already. They said given the function fx is 9x minus 2, and they ask you the image of 4. So now be careful, they ask you the image. The image means they want to find the value of fx 4 here. Is your object, or I can say, let x equals 4. So they want to know what is your fx when they have this assumption over here. And same for b2, object of 16 means they want you to find the object, which is x. This is the reverse process. 16 is your image, or in other words, let fx equals 16. So they want to find what is your x under this assumption. So then they ask you another one, they test your composite function, knowledge, f square. So quite a basic question. So b1, so we know fx is 9x minus 2. So we will make the assumption when x is 4, we want to find the image of 4. So we will substitute the x here with 4 and also here with 4. So you will get f4 is... 34. Done. One mark only, of course, for the answer. So, one mark over here. And down for B2. So, B2 we will put 
let x fx equals 16. So 16 equals 9x minus 2. All these are basic linear equation solving. So this shouldn't be a problem at this level already. So x is 2. And again, your n1 mark is here. So that's how you score. And then part B3 as well. This also is a basic one of doubling up the function. So f square x, you can write this down to aid your process of solving. So f square x will equal to f bracket 9x minus 2. Show this step. And then f square x, now you are going to put 9x minus 2 as your x under the second f function to get your f square x. This is the process here. So 9, so x variable you substitute with 9x minus 2 and minus 2 at the back also, don't forget. So you expand the bracket, 81x minus 18 minus 2, you will get 81x minus 20 done. So where is your marks? Again, when you can substitute correctly over here, you will get your k1 mark. And when you can show the correct final answer, you get another mark which leads you to 2 marks here. So total this question, 6 marks. So yeah, paper 1 as well. So that's why 6 marks. So that's how you score for this kind of questions. So next... Still in the state of Putrajaya. Okay, so this is under paper 2. You see functions came out in paper 2 as well. So there is a possibility. So let's go to the question. Okay, so they said given fx is 3x minus 2 and gx is x minus 3 so they ask you find f inverse and g inverse so there's always a reason why they ask you to find this because most likely it's going to be related as you can see here you see the question is requiring you to know the composite function of g inverse combined with f inverse so that's why you have to go back to here that's why they form this question for you over here so that you don't need to just directly do all this under one question down here so they separate five marks into two and three that's how they structure the questions. So let's find out the inverse function quickly. So part A. So we know that fx is 3x minus 2. So from here you want to find inverse function. Again the same assumption you have to make f inverse x is equal to y. Always remember this step. So you shift the f to the other side, you'll get f y. So you sub your f, you sub your x as the object with y as the object, you will get 3y minus 2 and you want this goal. So you need to satisfy y in terms of x. So you can shift the 2 over here and y will be x plus 2 over 3. So you can also conclude down here. So therefore, h f inverse x, careful with your labeling of function. Usually they give f or you can give any letter also if they like. So f inverse x is x plus 2 over 3. So that's how you score. So where, uh, I'll do g inverse as well first. So g x is x minus 3. So same step. Let g inverse x equals to y. So x is equal to gy. You'll stop your x as the object with y as the object. Shift the 3 there. So therefore, your g inverse x is equivalent to x plus 3. So in this case, the question only gave you two marks, as you can see here. So only the final answers will be awarded the marks, if they are correct. The thought process over here, uh, let's say this one, will not be awarded the marks. Only this part, N1, and also another N1 over here. So total is two marks for this one.
So I just have to get the correct answer, make sure it's accurate. So next, they ask what is the relation between FG, bracket the whole thing inverse, and G inverse F inverse X. So you have to find out these two separately first, then make a conclusion to your answer. So that's the idea. So don't make a careless mistake here thinking this is F inverse G inverse X. Don't expand the bracket according to the law of indices. They are telling this whole function, composite function of F, G, X, after you find it, you inverse the whole thing. It's not separately G inverse X, you sub into the F inverse X as you can see here. So don't get tricked with the bracket sign there. So that's the only catch in this question. Other than that, it's your normal knowledge, okay? So part B. So let's find F, G, X first x is f bracket gx f gx will equal to f bracket gx you will find out that is x minus 3 as given the question so this is going to come your x now in where you will substitute it inside the f function so f function is 3x minus 2 so it will become 3 bracket x minus 3 minus 2 and then you will do your normal expansion. FGX is 3X minus 9 minus 2. So FGX is 3X minus 11. So from here, now you can do the inverse. So you might think, how are you going to inverse composite function? We normally do inverse of normal function only. Let's say H inverse, F inverse. So it's the same concept. You just put let FG inverse x equals to y you follow the format that they showed you over here that they want you to find this part here so you just write down this whole thing this thing equals to y so it's the same concept again so if you pindakan the fg inverse you will get fgy same thing as before so now we're going to substitute the composite function here this x you'll put y because it's fgy over here already so this is how it works so you'll get 3y minus 11 and now you want to express y in terms of x to get the fg inverse so you'll get x plus 11 is 3y and y is x plus 11 over 3 so therefore i can conclude that I can conclude over here fg inverse x x plus 11 over 3 so this is not the final answer they're asking the relation still so we have to work on uh, the other part as well so we have to find out now our goal so always is a systematic process one by one so now our goal is to find out g inverse f inverse x we already have these two info so this question depends on your answer in A. If it's correct, then most likely if you apply the correct concept, this will be correct. But if A is wrong, if you still apply the correct concept, the values will run away already. So yeah, this is the danger of sometimes admits because it depends always on the previous question's answer. So it's all about accuracy. So F inverse we found earlier here, x plus 2 over 3. So you're going to substitute this x plus 2 over 3 as x into your g inverse x so you will get x plus 2 over 3 plus 3 because g x g inverse x is x plus 3 so this one you have to rationalize the denominator so what i'm going to do is make it over 3 over 1 and i'll make it have the same denominator of 3 so after this you will get x plus 2 on the top here plus 9 because here you times 3 and then times 3 again on top here so that's how you get 9 so how you the final answer you will get x plus 11 over 3 so you already found this part as well so now if you notice don't they have the same answer here is x plus 11 over 3 this also is f, x plus 11 over 3 so therefore you can conclude that Bracket FG inverse X here is equal to G inverse F inverse X is 
equal to x plus 11 over 3. So that's why they're showing you that these two have the same relation because of the way the function is ordered itself. So yeah. So how you're going to get your marks here is, uh, uh, let me see. So there's three marks. So first of all, when you can show your substitution over here, you are eligible for one mark. And when you can get your FG inverse correct here, you get another mark. And then, this is also another or mark, means they will check either one and give you the mark. So, this is another K1 mark. And this one you get down here also is another K1 mark. So, there's two different... Uh, function involved so I think if you get either one correct you still should get two out of three but your final answer might be wrong because you might say it's not equal to each other let's say this one you got wrong over here so most likely you will get two out of three and this one the last one is n1 of course so total here it still comes out to three only so they'll choose either one so yeah that's how you solve this and the next question is interesting. It's going to be a graph question. So, let's see. So, they ask you, ah, you see, always, you see, they play on this concept, the normal function and the inverse function. So, they want to see, you see, don't you, do you know the relationship or not between these two graphs? You see, they ask you the question, state the relationship. So, you have to know it very well. So, this is the graph. So, of course, whenever you have a graph, cannot run away you need to have a table of values as always so first function we want to plot out is 3x minus 2 so let's do a table of values for that so there's no domain specified so you're going to create your own domain or function here so one is x one is y so let's say if i say let x is zero you will get an image of fx as negative 2 and if x is 1 this also will be 1 and let's say I want to let my fx be 0, I will get here as 2 over 3. So just a random plotting. And now another one is f inverse x. Is x plus 2 over 3. So another table of values. x and y. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. Where I want to let my x is 0, I will get 2 over 3 for y. And I will let my y come 0, I will get negative 2 for x. And if I let my x 1, I will get this also as 1. So you can see a common point here. You see the intersection of the two graphs. So that's why they say it's a reflection of each other. Reflect. So you should always expect to have one common coordinate where these two graphs intersect to show there is a reflection happening. So let's plot the graph now. So I'll try to be accurate as possible. Although it's on the tablet here. So, I'll put a scale. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Here, 1, 2, 3, 4. It's just a sketch. So, you don't have to be that accurate like plotting on a graph paper. But make sure it's still reasonable, the scale values. The distance between the scale. Okay. So, first point I want to plot for y equals fx first. So, we know the points is 0, negative 2. And I have another point 2 over 3 and 0. So, 2 over 3 you need to know is 0 0.67. So, it will be somewhere here close to 1 but not touching at 1. Another one is 1, 1. So, 1, 1 will be somewhere here. So, you can see it's always going to be a straight line graph. Because you can see the equation is in the form of y equals mx plus c, 3x minus 2. So you can label, always practice the habit of labeling the function or the equation that represents your graph that you plot. So that's a good way to indicate to the examiner. And another one is f inverse. We have 0, 2 over 3. So you can see here the relationship I always told. The domain of the normal function is the range of the inverse function. So you see the domain of fx 2 over 3 has switched to the range with the same value on the f inverse. Which is your y. La. Range means y. 
So another point, negative 2, 0, and 1, 1 as well. So you see the common point intersecting here. You see, and I draw this graph. Can you see it's like an opposite of each other? So f inverse x is um, x plus 2 over 3. So it's how you label. And then they ask to state the relationship again. So that's one more question you need to address. If you want to show your line y equals to x, you can show to show that you know it's a reflection of each other. This is your y equals to x. So then they ask you to state the relationship. So you can conclude here. Therefore, graph y equals fx is the reflection of the graph y equals f inverse x. Don't forget this last sentence, very important. Where, where are you reflecting at? Don't just say it's the reflection. You have to specify uh, or describe the reflection as you learn in your transformation chapter. You always say reflect at or in x equals to 2. Like that. Always mention the equation to indicate. So, yeah. So, how you get your 3 marks? Simple. If you plot fx graph correctly, you will get your process 1 mark. If you plot your f inverse graph correctly, you get another process mark. And if you state the correct relationship between the two graphs, you get your n1 mark. So this is 3 marks. And the total for this question is 8 marks because it's in paper 2. So yeah, that's how you score for your functions. So another question from Putrajaya as well. is in set 2 of paper 2 as well so the first one itself they already asked you to sketch a graph apparently so let's see mm. okay so we have gx this is given to you So gx is x squared minus 1 over 2 and they specify the domain for you. So this is most likely to aid you what table of values to plot when you sketch the graph. So first of all, they ask you to sketch g and g inverse. So what you're going to do is you will let g inverse x is y. So your x is gy, same step, finding your inverse function. So gy will be y squared minus 1 over 2 and again express y in terms of x. So you can see here, you will get a square root graph of 2x plus 1. So don't be suspicious, you got the correct answer only. So you'll conclude that g inverse x is square root 2x plus 1. You don't need to simplify it further, this is already... Uh, the best version you can keep it so now is first of all you need to notice that this x square minus 1 over 2 graph will always you will expect in a quadratic form because it's x power 2 and if you simplify it you know it's half x square minus half so this is your a this is your c so you can expect a graph that is smiling and yeah so now we're going to try to do the table of values so let's see in the next slide. This is the graph section. So first of all, let's plot for gx equals x square minus 1 over 2. We only need to plot for here, no stating relation. So again, I'm going to use the domain given there. So x and y. So when x is 0, I assume I will get gx or you can say y is negative half. If x is 3, y is 4. And if x is 1, y is 0. So that's how you form. Make sure you always have these two conditions. Let x is 0 and let y is 0. So yeah. And the next graph. 
which is the square root graph. So be careful of this graph, square root 2x plus 1. Because when you square root anything, you can always expect positive and negative values. But in this case, you need to be smart which value you want to choose in the first place. So if let x is 0, you will should get uh, g inverse x is square root 1. So are you going to choose 1 or negative 1 here? You are again going to choose 1. Because as you know, the domain of the normal function given here is going to apply to the range of this function or the y. So your range for this function, you can expect it to be between 0, uh, less than or equal to x, less than or equal to 3. So if you get negative 1 here, you should suspect something. Does this obey this range? No, it's outside it already. So that's why I'm going to reject a negative and put only a positive 1 over here. So be careful with that. And let's say I put 0 here, I will get negative half here. There's nothing much. And if 4, again, the same thing you will get square root 9. So you might be thinking negative 3 or 3. So again, respect to this range, you should reject the negative except the positive. So it's positive 3. So always beware of the square root functions over here. So now we can plot. So again, make sure your scale is as good as possible. Negative 1, negative 2. Okay, so now let's plot for GX. So GX, we know that 0 will pair with negative half. So you can estimate it to be here. And 3 will pair with 4. So I'll do a bit of dotted line here. You will get somewhere here. And 1 pairs with 0. So make sure here don't accidentally connect all these points as a straight line. You still cannot connect it actually. But don't draw a line of best fit. You need to expect it to be curved like this. Try to get it nicely. Yeah, curve like this. So this is your y equals to gx function. Or you can label x square minus 1 over 2 as well. So we now plot for the other one. So 0 plot to 1. Negative half and 0. And 4 and 3. So you can see inversely the points. Here is 3 and 4. Here is 4 and 3. So from here you can plot it. These three points like this. So can you see it's opposite to each other. You see it intersects at one common point there under this line of y equals to x. So that's how you see it. So this is how you plot the graph. So it's two marks only. So if you can plot gx graph correct, one mark. And also this graph, one mark. So two marks total. Don't forget, label this graph as well. g inverse x equals square root 2x plus 1. So that's how you solve it. So that's A done. So we read B. Using horizontal line test. Explain why it exists. So quite an interesting question. So this you need to try it out on your diagram of course. So if you can see here. How you're going to do the horizontal line test is. Don't perform it on the inverse function. But try it on the normal function instead. Because from the normal function only, you're going to get your inverse function. As you can see, it only intersects at one point over here. Means it's showing a one-to-one -one relation. One object has one image on the graph. So that's how you interpret it. So I can conclude here that why it exists. So you can write in sentence the horizontal line. Cuts the graph of gx. Or if you want, you can also try on g inverse. You get the same result. At only one point. For the given domain. It shows a one-to-one -one relation. 
So you can always write more to show you know exactly the deeper understanding of the concept between normal function and inverse function and of course the horizontal line test and shows the one to one relation and hence g inverse x or gx agrees so that's how you show it so the key points that earn you the marks i'll tell you here so the examiner will want to see these parts in your answer cuts the graph at only one point this part especially so that's what gives you your n1 mark and if you write it exists you also get one more mark that's how you prove it so that's how you get two marks over here so that's how you score so next we go to part c1 you to find g inverse x so we already found actually there so your g inverse x is actually square root 2x plus 1 earlier so that was just one mark you just need to write your final answer for only one mark so c2 c2 they ask you to find domain and range of g inverse so you can directly state actually there's nothing to find so it's based on the graph that you sketch so your domain you will notice that it's negative half less than x less than 4 as you can see over here g inverse is this graph and it cuts negative half until 4 3 which is here so that's how you identify your domain so it's within this range of course because the range of the uh, g inverse x is the domain of the gx so that's how you see it so we go down here so if range range will be the same as your g as the domain of your gx because of the theory behind it so make sure you write g inverse x as your middle there because don't write gx because the question asks you domain and range of g inverse so how you get your mark Again, if you show this correct, one mark. Show this correct, one mark. So, total two marks. So, yeah, that's how you score. This question total is seven marks. Plus paper two as well. So, that's how you score. And, of course, now we come to the last question. Which is SBP paper one. So, this was quite a really bonus question, I would say. Nothing much hard. So part A, they ask you to find f inverse x. So they said fx is x minus 4 over 3. So you just need to find your f inverse. So always good to copy back the thing. And also be careful how you write it. The 4 only belongs to the x. So you'll make the assumption again. Let f inverse x is y. x is fy. And you will get x is y minus y over 4 minus 3. So now your job is to express y in terms of x. And you will get y is 4x plus 12. So therefore you can conclude that. x plus 12 so this one only carries one mark so your final answer of course will earn you that one mark that's all one mark only so make sure you find your inverse function well so next they ask you gx so you have fx you have gfx again a very common one find back your gx so gfx is x over 2 minus 7 and we know our fx is x over 4 minus 3 so again make the assumption let y equals x over 4 minus 3 and you will express x in terms of y because we want gx so x is 4y plus 12 make sure you have to 4 bracket this whole thing and expand so you will get 
gy is 4y plus 12 over 2. So you substitute the x with this, y, 4y plus 12, and minus 7. You will get 2y plus 6 minus 7. This whole thing is in a bracket here. And then you solve, you get gy is 2y minus 1. And therefore you conclude gx is 2x minus 1. So this is one way. Another way is you can apply the concept of inverse function again. Means you want to cancel out the f function with the f inverse, which you already found in A. So this step is for if you want to take a risk, and this risk is applied, that your A answer is correct. Because if your f inverse is wrong, it's going to affect the gx function. Then the earlier method was ever free because fx is already provided already there. So yeah, that's the risk you have to take here. So you found your f inverse is 4x plus 12, which is your gx. So this becomes your x for the composite function. So it will become 4x plus 12 over 2 minus 7. If you want, you can put it in a bracket. It's gx. So you solve, you will get 2x plus 6 minus 7. And you see? Same answer, 2x minus 1. So where are the marks? So for if you applying this method, when you can substitute this correctly, again, see substitution gains you one mark. And of course, your final answer, which is correct, will gain you an n one mark so this is two marks or if you try the opposite method i mean the alternative method you also can get two marks if you can show this one over here substitution again and your final answer n one so now yeah that's how you score two marks Now comes to the final part, part C, it is the last of the part 3. So part C, they ask you to find the C, uh, G, F inverse 2. So again here you have two methods, I'll show you the first one. I'll put find G, F inverse X first without substituting X is 2. You already found your f inverse. So again here, this is provided that you found your a answer is correct. So always it's related, the question. So your f inverse, you will substitute it inside your g function, which is uh, you found earlier as well. So that has to be correct. 2x minus 1. So your x there will be substituted with 4x plus 12. So you will find out that 8x plus 24, you expand. You will get gf inverse x as 8x plus 23 and from here you can apply what the question 1 when x is 2 gf inverse 2 will equal to 8 2 times plus 23 you will get gf inverse 2 is 39 that's one method but I have another method as well, which is quite effective as well, if you thought about it. Why not? I straight away sub the f inverse x function I got earlier was 4x plus 12. I sub x equals to 2 directly here. So that I don't need to do the expansion and all stuff. Because I already have a value for my f inverse. So if you find f inverse, you will get, uh, it will become 20 f inverse 2 is 20 and from here you can proceed to the question where they want you to find gf inverse x so you already know your f inverse x here i mean gf inverse 2 you can say because f inverse 2 is 20 so you just have to put as g20 and your g function which you found was 2x minus 1 so it's 220 so 20 now becomes your object for the g function so you will find out that gf inverse 2 you also get 39 so that's the beauty of 
uh, this question you can solve it many ways and also get the same answer so if you are using this method over here your first mark is when you can find your gf inverse x correctly and when you can get your final answer by substitute x equals 2 so that's one way you get two marks or if you chose this method if you can find your f inverse 2 correctly as 20 you get one mark and if you can find your gf inverse 2 you also get one mark so total here for sbp you will get five marks so that's how it's called so yeah so this will be the end of the presentation so hope you liked it a lot and thank you for listening so as always do always support my channels as you can see over here we have on tiktok and also on youtube so this is my channel you can find it out and i've already posted three videos here and youtube already i think around 15 including this video so do help to support share like and hope it benefits more form for students taking admits uh, and also change their perception of admits that Maths is a subject for everyone and it's actually easy. Always think and maths is easy. So yeah. And yeah, like, share and subscribe. And if you want, you can always PM me your question via this email over here. And I will try to respond to your maths or maths question or also any social media if you're comfortable. That you know me if I follow you on Instagram or Facebook or WhatsApp or telegram or messenger anywhere so yeah so thank you for listening